Hey, you! You're finally awake! You were trying to cross the border, right? Walked right into that Imperial ambush. Same as us, and that thief over there. Hello everyone, I'm Cole from the Kingdom, and today we're talking about how video games open. So let's hop right in. So here we are in Skyrim with the painfully long intro that has been memed to death and then some. But see, on the surface, this isn't actually that bad. Because with this conversation, the state of the nation is set up. There's a civil war, and Ulfric Stormcloak and Captain Bailey, I mean General Tullius, are the respective leaders. The Stormcloaks are mad at the Thalmor, Nords value their culture. This is all good. But oh my god, it's too long. And the environment... You start in some snowy woods and then head into a town. This could be anywhere, this isn't that interesting. Then the dragon shows up, and this is actually a really cool set piece, and was really impressive the first time. It's just a shame about how long it took to get here. Let's now look at Mass Effect 2. We start with Miranda and the elusive man having a chat about Shepard proving humanity's worth to the galaxy and how important they are. Then we get the Normandy investigating mystery ships before being absolutely wrecked in an ambush. The intro sets up some important details, and the action happens pretty quickly, and you are hit with a heavy weight. What? Then you get into the Lazarus Project and the attack on the station, and you get some more info gradually. What this intro doesn't do is set up any aliens at all. So if this is your first Mass Effect game for some reason, you wouldn't know how small humanity actually is in this setting. Yeah, the elusive man talks about it, but the environment would make you think humans are bloody amazing. Compare that to the first game, which starts with a conversation between Alliance leaders and how humanity is in need of a champion. Then we're introduced to Nihilus pretty much right away, telling us this isn't a simple human versus aliens game. We get some optional conversations, which give us a hefty dose of info about the Alliance, but the mandatory conversation with Nihilus reveals that humanity are newcomers and comparatively small. So let's look at... hmm... Dragon Age Inquisition. Okay, the menu leads into the explosion at the Conclave. Alright, that's awesome. Then we pick our class and race with tarot cards, and... That was probably a mistake. For newcomers, they should have shown what the races actually looked like. After the character creator, we get some foggy running and then waking up to an interrogation. They weave in some world building and lore along the way and set up the stakes when you walk outside. So, pretty good overall. Dragon Age 2 starts with Varric being interrogated and then gives a highly embellished version of Hawk kicking ass, before revealing how much of a struggle it actually was. This is good because it sets up good questions right away, and introduces us to the combat system with lots of abilities already unlocked, before cutting us back to level 1. He gives some exposition to set us up, and then cut to the main character running and struggling among Darkspawn. Pretty good. So, Half-Life. You start on a tram, and this, like Skyrim, is painfully long. But it does some really cool things. For one, you get some great environmental storytelling, and the intercom voice woman sets up the status quo, which is good because things are about to go off the rails pretty spectacularly. Then you walk around a bit more, and again, it takes a while, but because you're doing things instead of just sitting and listening for the most part, it makes you feel like you're part of the world. And then Half-Life 2, which is one of my favorite intros of all time. The G-Man gives us a drug trip of a sinister monologue, and then we enter the dystopia of City 17. Dr. Breen overhead right away, scary gas mask police, alien slave, blood in an interrogation room, everyone wearing the same jumpsuit, alien tech everywhere, raids on citizen homes. Dude, it doesn't get much better than this. And you get to experience some action before you even have a weapon. So, kinda long, but it works. It totally works. Half-Life 3 is... Oh. Uh, what is there to even say about Portal 2? It's hilarious, it raises important questions, provides great environmental storytelling, it makes sense... Yeah. Grand Theft Auto 4! Man, I really love this intro, in no small part because of the rocking music. Oh, that's the stuff. But it gives some background to the main character and leads into the big reveal of Liberty City. That said, I do not like the opening line and the first thing we see. I also do not care for the fact that the details of Nico's backstory aren't revealed for several hours of playtime. 
Halo. Halo CE opens with Captain Keys and Cortana worried about the Covenant, approaching a mysterious ring world, being attacked by the Covenant, and waking up Master Chief. Though they usually make you go through a quick looking around tutorial, which is always weird to me given the ship is under attack. Then you run through with no weapon, which shouldn't really be a problem for Chief in the lore, but he's gotta talk to Keys. He gives you a pistol, but he doesn't keep it loaded, so you'll have to find ammo as you go. I have complaints about CE's level design, but it's basically a battle on the ship, and then you crash on the mysterious ring world. Good opening! Halo 2 is really cool because you get to see the Covenant side of it, and Thel Vatami is being blamed for failing to protect Halo, while Master Chief is being awarded for destroying it and some stuff he did in a book. The tutorial section here is way more natural because they aren't under attack yet. But then they are under attack, and now you gotta defend the station. And it ends amazingly. <laughs> Halo 3 is actually kind of boring at first compared to the first two games, but it's still decent. Ship is coming to Earth, Chief falls out, is rescued, and meets the Arbiter as an ally. That part's really cool. But then at the start of the second mission is where the story is recapped and summarized for newcomers. And it feels mostly natural the way it's explained. So that's great. In Halo Reach, you see that the planet was totally destroyed and you see your character's helmet amidst the destroyed surface, before flashing back to them joining Noble Team. Not too exciting, but certainly interesting. And now for a bad example, Halo 4. We start with Cortana looking like a frightened little girl instead of the badass she was in the previous games. Wait, no, I forgot. We actually start with an obnoxiously boring interrogation of Dr. Halsey. Then we get to Cortana looking like a frightened little girl. We're suddenly fighting elites again, and Chief says he thought they had a truce with the Covenant, which does not make any sense at all. Cortana just says a lot can happen in the time he's been in Gryo, but that is not an explanation. She notes the attacking Covenant aren't standard military, so they may be rogue salvagers or something, but then quickly corrects herself when we see their fleet. This sets up the promise that the Covenant faction will be explained at some point. It is not. In fact, this mission isn't even that fun. You get a low gravity section, but because the art style is so terrible, it's hard to enjoy. Start of the second mission, we learn about Cortana's rampancy, and we resolve to get her back to Earth to save her. That's the second promise the game sets up. Consequently, the entire conflict with the Didact feels like a side quest. Brandon Sanderson explains this problem really well in some of his lectures. Promises and payoff. Halo 4 sets up promises that are then ignored. It raises questions that are never answered in the main game. This is not a good way to open a game. Another way to open a game I haven't mentioned is to set up a threat or the villain right away. The Resident Evil 2 remake does this really well. Skyrim does this with Alduin destroying Helgen, and Half-Life 2 does this a little with its dystopia, but the Combine progressively seem like a bigger and bigger threat throughout the game. Which is also good. So there are lots of good ways to open a game. You can raise questions players will want answers to, you can grip them with cool action, you can intrigue them with unique characters and settings, you can take a nice, slow build-up, or drop straight into the action. Most of these can be mixed and matched for great effect. I think one thing to avoid in an opening would be taking it too slow. Like, compare and contrast Skyrim with Half-Life. Skyrim takes a while, and while it does say some important stuff, it takes too long to do it in an environment that isn't very interesting at first. Half-Life lets you move around at least, and the slowness has a role beyond delivering exposition. It grounds you in the world. Though the tram section, yeah, a little long. But the environmental storytelling helps a lot. Another thing to avoid would be delivering too much exposition. But that's just general advice for any story. Tell the players what they need to know, and if you can weave it into the dialogue or environment in a natural way, that's probably the way you should do it. And finally, be aware of the narrative promises you're giving to the player. If the game opening promises fighting a losing battle, follow through with that. If it promises a mystery and exploring a mansion in the woods, probably smart to not leave the mansion and hunt down kaiju in giant mecha suits. I mean, I might like that too, but promise me that from the start. So here's where I'll wrap things up. Let me know what are some of your favorite game openings and what makes them so great. 
So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like. I'll see you later.